Uh, my name is Daniel Strait, and I teach in the English department at Asbury University. I'm Professor Elisa Morley, and I teach in the art department. Yeah, my name is Burnham Reynolds, and I teach history here at Asbury, and uh, primarily uh, medieval history is my specialty. Every one of my classes, especially the upper division classes, use the library for, for research. Every one of the upper division classes has a research paper. I think a lot of students think that research is kind of a bad word. It makes them think of the book reports that they had to do in elementary school, but it's really about pursuing your own interests. You know, a 50-minute class or 75-minute class has certain boundaries and limits, and so what research does, what the library does for us, is it sort of opens up this whole context for uh, developing the conversation beyond the walls of the classroom. It's getting students to say, oh gosh, I can actually do this in the context of, of my class. I think that students are getting excited by how much they can find when they, when they visit the library now. When students are able to initiate um, research on their own, once they're excited about it, um, their work is much more substantial and it touches more people. And somebody who's just getting into a topic will see something occasionally that somebody who's been, you know, kind of on a topic for years will not. I, I want them to be able to uh, actually know what visual research involves. I want them to be aware of the, uh, the variety of, uh, of uh, items in their field. The present age is not the only story. The experience with the Asbury Archives has been great. Uh, very helpful, very willing to work with students and, and work with me. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't give it higher marks. I require the students to go down to the archives and uh, take a look at Samuel Johnson's dictionary. We have a 1773 uh, edition of that famous dictionary. Well, basically, I had them um, to go down as a class um, to actually go down and handle with white gloves the um, antiquities and um, artifacts and uh, works of art in archives um, with the white gloves and they had to go and to draw what they were holding. Most of the time these are sources nobody else has really looked at and so you're on the ground floor. Sure catapults them back in time a little bit. Students who have had more exposure um, will be very excited about interacting with these works of art in a very tangible, physical way. They look at this dictionary, they, they feel it, they, they can smell the, uh, the scent of the old book. Uh, I think it's a history lesson for them. It was really powerful to see how the students, um, when they're given an opportunity, really resonate with the works on a very deep level. I think, I think it will help ignite their interest in history if it isn't already ignited, but maybe sharpen it even, because it, it gives them the, the sense that they're actually participating in the making of history. You know, it's, it's one thing to read it on the printed page, it's another to actually conduct an experiment in the lab or outside or go out and gather, do field work. You have to couple you know, book learning with experience um, in order to complete the picture, um, to educate the whole person. So it's really important for them just to sort of sit uh, in the library, again, not as some dull intellectual exercise, but uh, as a place where they can sort of actively find their way into a conversation with great ideas. We, we talk about primary and secondary sources, but even primary sources are actually a finished product insofar as they're frequently edited or placed in some kind of format so they can be used for research. When you're working in the archives, you're almost doing something, if I can borrow a term from uh, our education friends, you're doing pre-primary. You're, you're looking at the raw material that later will be formed up into uh, some kind of edited form and, and uh, uh, displayed for, for uh, research. So this is really the, the molecular level almost. Of, of historical research. Very, very interesting in that regard. Only studying works of art um, through secondary sources um, causes the works of art to lose their potency. You need to look at secondary sources 
where uh, people have uh, have studied the issue and come to certain conclusions. But then you also need to look at the primary sources to see if you agree with those conclusions. You're experiencing it in its intended context. It used to be that there wasn't really an archives and things were in danger of being destroyed. So this is this is not only a good a good uh, uh, office to have to maintain what we have here at Asbury, but they've been really very, very kind and, and willing to work with, uh, with me. So the opportunities for students to do a little bit more primary research in a couple of different areas has increased significantly.